Hi, I'm Jen Mason of the Urban Sewing Society, and I want to take a moment to thank the Sustainable Fashion Week for allowing me the opportunity to present this workshop on creating a upcycled denim patchwork skirt. I'm really excited about presenting this today and taking you through the steps on how to piece together the patchwork and create this denim skirt. And you can use this technique on pants, jackets, uh, bags, whatever kind of upcycle project you might have in line. So here are your list of supplies and your main supply is going to be three to five pairs of jeans. One of those pairs of jeans needs to fit you in the waist and the hips because that is the part that you're going to use for the top portion of the skirt. So measure from the top of that waistband down to the bottom and keep that measurement in mind because you'll need to have this measurement for your finished skirt. All right, let's jump right into it. Hi everyone, my name is Jen Mason and I am the owner and operator of The Urban Sewing Society where we bring fashion and creativity to your neighborhood. For the last 30 years, I've been teaching sewing classes. And over the last 15 years, I have really enjoyed upcycling. And I've been teaching upcycling, taking my students out to the thrift stores and encouraging them to go into their closets and instead of giving away those clothes that don't fit anymore, taking them and turning them into something that's absolutely fat. Over the last year, I've concentrated a lot of my efforts around upcycling denim and I have just fallen in love with upcycling denim. So a couple months ago I did a upcycle uh, denim patchwork dress that I created from a pattern and I typically will create my own designs but I wanted to give instruction around using a pattern for upcycles because a lot of people like to work with patterns. They like to be able to follow instructions and put things together with someone giving them instructions. So for for one of my classes, I used a pattern for an upcycle and I love the way it came out. Uh, and so today I'm going to do a different version of that with you and it's going to be a denim patchwork skirt. So we're basically gonna take that dress and chop it in half and only use the bottom part of it. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna take you through the steps of how to pull together a patchwork denim skirt. You can make this skirt whatever length you want if you want to make it mini if you want to make it come just below the knee or longer it's totally up to you I'm gonna probably make it a little bit longer than knee version I want to wear it with some cute boots in the winter time and then if I get tired later on and I decide that the longer skirt isn't working for me I can always cut it off later we're gonna start with three pairs of denim jeans and we've got the three pairs of denim jeans what I like to do when I go and thrift or I'm pulling jeans out of my closet that I'm no longer wearing I really like to look for brand name jeans so I prefer to go with brand name jeans because the quality of the denim is always a lot better so this pair here is a st. John jeans quality is really really great in fact the quality is so good when it came time to taking the zipper out and removing that part it was very difficult it was sewn together very well as opposed to some jeans jeans that you might buy that uh, may be less expensive, you might um, find that the quality and the wear is not as good. When you're looking and you're out in thrift stores and you're trying to find some jeans to upcycle, always look at the names and see who makes them and that will help you. So we've looked at the jeans that we have and as you saw, I started cutting and this is what I've come up with. So for the first pair of jeans that I cut up, these are my squares. They were all about six inches wide but they have different length measurements. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to look at where I can see there's um, a straight line and I'm gonna start to even these up and make these squares. They're gonna be more rectangles and not so much squares because
because as you can see, they're actually kind of long. Uh, as I get into the other jeans and start to cut those up, I'm probably gonna have the same. There'll be more rectangles as opposed to squares. And then I will begin to show you how we'll piece them together. I like to piece my denim together by alternating the shades. I don't wanna put two of the same shade next to each other because I'd like to have some variety. And with this skirt, you can decide to have the seams on the outside or the seams on the inside. So for, for the sake of this video, we're gonna do the seams on the inside and we're gonna do some top stitching so that we'll have a nice clean finish. But again, you can take this and make this your own style and do whatever you like. I'm only gonna give you the process and you just take your creativity and put your creativity into it and make it your own. So I hope you enjoy the video and um, I would love for you to show me what your finished projects look like. Please reach out to me on Instagram at The Urban Sewing Society or on Facebook at The Urban Sewing Society. I also have a Facebook group where we have sewing classes and we share sewing ideas. And then I have my sewing uh, my the Urban Sewing Society Facebook page that you're welcome to like and follow for more upcycling ideas. So let's get started on this project. It is going to be fabulous. Okay, your first step is going to be to cut those heavy fat fell seams off the insides of the jeans. Put those to the side because you may leave them later for a another upcycling project. And then what I do is I take the legs of the jeans and I measure about five inches, five or six inches in the width. Uh, the length is going to change and vary because the front part of the jeans is always shorter and more narrow than the back side of the jeans. And I typically cut my triangle, my um, uh, rectangles or squares up to the thigh portion of the jeans. That's another pretty wide portion of the jeans. So you wanna go up as far as you can, not cutting into the pocket. And then I'm trimming off these extra seams and tossing those to the side because again, you may need those a little later. I'm not worried as much here of making everything really straight. I just wanna get the pieces cut so that I can go back in later and straighten them out. I'm also taking a moment to press the squares and the rectangles because I want it to be nice and flat. That makes it easier when I take my ruler and my chalk and go in and straighten out those edges. If you notice here, the seam is uneven. It's kind of on an angle. And so it's really important to work on the other three sides first. Make sure that those three sides are even and then you can even up across the top. Yes, you will lose a little bit of fabric, but again, keep those scraps to the side and use them later. And so here I continue to cut on the straight line using my ruler cutting off all the excess and making sure that I'm coming up with a even square or even rectangle. And I begin to kind of match up the pieces kind of randomly. I like to keep various shades of the denim next to each other instead of just having two dark pieces next to each other and then having two light pieces next to each other. I try to make, I try to piece them together kind of random for the design and just continue to even up the sides. And after you even up the sides, um, you notice some of the edges kind of curl up. It's important to go back in with your iron and press those nice and flat. And sometimes I can take a piece that I've already cut into a nice even rectangle or square and put that across the top and cut around it and make sure that that other piece is nice and even. This process is going to take you a little bit of time. So make sure you have a little time on your hands, be patient with yourself. Um, don't try to cut corners. Really uh, don't throw away those scraps either. <laughs> 
like to do next is take my patches and arrange them in a random selection. So I take the light and match it with the dark and the dark match it with the light so that I have a good variety. And then I begin to pin them together at the sides and create my panels. For my skirt, given the length that I want it to be, I'm gonna need about six or seven panels. So depending on the width of your skirt will determine how many panels you will need. Now you are at the machine and you are sewing your patches together to create these long panels. My skirt ended up being about 36 inches long, somewhere between 30 and 36 inches long. But you have to take into consideration that there is a yoke at the top. So you want to make sure that you are making your panels to the length plus the yoke. So you want to take that yoke into consideration. Remember at the beginning, we measured from the waistband to the bottom of the yoke. If that is 10 inches and you want your skirt to be 20 inches, then you only need 10 inches more of a panel at the bottom. So make sure that you're making the measurements and you're making the skirt to the length that you desire. Now I'm stitching this at about a quarter of an inch, which gives me just enough room to go back in and do a top stitch on each one of these. After I do the top stitch, I wanna take this to my ironing board and press it really good. This is really, really important. The pressing is always going to give you a really nice professional look. Now, if you notice here, I took some distressed pieces that I had left over from another project and I added them. This is the time where if you want to add embellishments or do something extra, uh, maybe sew some of those scraps onto the patches, this is where you really wanna add in those extra touches. So I decided to add in this pocket that I had from a previous project onto the yoke and I'm really happy that I decided to do that because I felt like it gave an interesting pattern to the top of the skirt. Otherwise the skirt was looking kind of plain but when I added this pocket which is a total contrasting color or, or shade from the other denim um, I thought it gave for a really interesting look. So I plugged that in here and stitched around it. I used denim thread to go over the stitches that were already in the pocket so that it matched up really nicely. And then I took this over to my iron and I ironed it. We're gonna spend a little time here working on the yoke por portion of the skirt. If you notice right under the zipper, the seam is curved and this seam must lay flat in order for the front of your skirt to lay flat. So what I've done is I've gone in here and I've clipped inside the curve, folded it over flat, and then take it to my sewing machine and stitch right on top of the stitches that are already there. Uh, it's best to use some thread that matches so that you don't have contrasting thread or cover up the color that's already there. Once you sew that flat, make sure you take it to your ironing board and press. While you're at your ironing board, also press those panels really good. Sew, top stitch, and press. Sew, top stitch, and press in that order. If you find that you've missed any of the panels, go back in and do those top stitches and then press them down. Here, I'm just going through to make sure that I've completed each one of the panels. I did find that there were a few that I missed, so I had to go back in and take them back to the sewing machine. But in general, I really like the way they came out. You can use different shades of denim if you like, or all the same. Uh, it's really up to you. So the next step is to make sure that these panels are nice and even. So this is where your ruler comes in. You can measure on one side, mark, and then straighten out the other side, however it works best for you. Um, some of the panels you'll find will have some longer pieces, some will have some shorter pieces. You know, it's your design preference 
is what comes in at this part. So for me, I try to even up with the most narrow piece in my panel and align all of the other squares and rectangles with that larger piece. And here I started to match up the panels with each other. I wanted to make sure that the light pieces of denim were not right next to other lighter pieces of denim. I wanted the contrast to really show. And I did create an extra panel that I ended up taking out at the end. Uh, I just wanted to be sure that I had enough panels to go all the way around. And again, I ended up using that leftover panel in another project. So none of this is going to go to waste. So once you decide which panels you want to be next to each other, you can begin to pin these panels together because you're going to take them over to the sewing machine and you're going to start to stitch. So here I lay them one on top of the other and then I start to pin my pieces together. What I didn't want is for seams to be right next to each other. I wanted them to be somewhat staggered. So this meant that I had to play around with the pieces for several minutes before I felt like they were aligned perfectly. Make sure when you're pinning, you pin all the way from the top to the bottom so that the pieces do not move around. Always pin with the head of the pin near the edge of the fabric so that they're easy to remove as you start to sew. And I did this all the way around until I was completely satisfied with the way the panels were lined up. And believe me, this does take a little bit of time. Now I'm at the sewing machine sewing the panels together. I had uh, six or seven panels here. Once I sewed straight, I sewed on top and did a top stitch on each one. And this is important not only for the design, but also for the reinforcement. Then after I sewed everything together, it kind of looks like a quilt. It is very similar to sewing a quilt. I tried the skirt on to make sure that it was going to fit. And that's when I realized that I had an extra panel that I could get rid of. The next step was to try the yoke on, which obviously fits perfectly in the waist and in the hip, and then put the skirt on and see if that's going to fit. And I wanted to see where do I want those distressed pieces? Do I want them in the front, on the side? Um, I started folding it over and eventually I pinned the bottom of the skirt to the yoke to see where I wanted it to be placed. And this is really important. I mean. You know, if you're going to go for a shorter skirt or a longer skirt or even in between, you really want to make sure that any designs that you've added onto it are in the place that you want them to be. And so take some time to play around with the placement. After this step, I removed the extra panel that I didn't need that was towards the back and I decided to keep the distressed pieces on the front of the skirt. I attached the bottom of the skirt to the yoke, sewed it completely around as you can see here. You can go in with your serger and finish off these raw edges if that makes you feel more comfortable. But you also will flip it back over on the right side and top stitch around the top of the yoke. You can do your top stitch either on the yoke part or the skirt portion and then again take it over to your ironing board and press it down good and flat. The last thing I did was lay, lay the skirt out flat and even out the bottom of the skirt. Now this is an interesting design feature if I decided to leave it uneven at the bottom but I prefer to just cut it straight across turn it up an inch and I stitched it with the sewing machine for the hem. Nothing real special. If you want to stitch it by hand, you certainly can do that. If you want to use your serger, I would recommend that as well. So here is the finished skirt. I really like the way it turned out. It had a bit of a flare at the bottom. 
but again you can make the skirt in any length you can do this on jackets you can do this on bags you can do this on any kind of item once you learn how to do the process um, you can do this on any project any upcycling project so i hope you enjoyed and please let me know if you decide to try this out bye